good day uh, welcome to ee420 ece420 seema sunlock and mix signal ic design lecture 14 cascode stages so today we will talk about cascode circuits and how they are uh, useful so let's begin first of all what is uh, a cascode and let us understand why that particular name has come so if you look at the terminology if you look at the terminology it has come from the vacuum tube generation right what did the vacuum tubes have vacuum tubes had a uh, output terminal and an input terminal so the output terminal used to be the anode and the next stage input terminal used to be a cathode right so in this case uh, you would have two terminals here and similar thing when they wanted to bring it out as a configuration for a cmos circuit configuration for cmos circuit they introduce say let us put it as one block after another right so there are two configurations the one name is called cascade cascade is one after the other right they are placed adjacent to each other so here you will have the input of this stage input 1 output 1 will be input 2 and output 2 so this is circuit 1 this is circuit 2 cascode so uh, let me give you another example what does it mean so if this is a we just saw this in the previous class so this is a common gate stage right what is a common gate stage gate is common input is given at the source output is given at the drain right right common gate stage and then it is followed by a common drain stage or common source stage so that means this output is given what is it this output can be given to the gate input so this is one configuration this is not that uh, commonly used but the flip version right flip version is used to ensure that you have the first common source stage why is that you have a amplification okay right? so you will have a common source stage so you have an amplification and then you have a common gain stage why does this do here you will get the common gate stage you will get is your input and output where you can do impedance balance to find out if you want to get a higher impedance lower impedance so this output will given to be given to here at the source and you will take the output here at the load so this is another co configuration so this say the r in here is infinite and r out is dependent on r out of this device in parallel with whatever is the drain resistance that is present there so that way you will have here so here you have a high gain okay inversion stage so high voltage gain 
and in this case you will have current gain and output impedance control now this was a cascade circuit so same thing when you put devices instead of putting one another if you stack them over one another that is how i understood so if you stacked them it became a cascade now same thing instead of putting writing this way if you write it on top of each other so this became a cascade and this became a cascade so i give my input here this is one device here m1 another device here m2 and you take the output here so this would become a cas code device meaning i would stack them stack them one over the other okay now this stacking is only on the schematic for understanding okay because in the layout they will still be adjacent to each other only you will only do appropriate connectivity so just to understand and make yourself familiarize and differentiate between cascade and cascode to put it this way so if you have a amplifier amplifier 1 amplifier 2 this is called a cascade of two amplifiers so where you have you will have input given here output taken out over here right and this could be two common source stages by itself so cascade is one after the other cascode is one above the other this is an easy way to remember what a cascode is right so the way i uh, understood initially was so from cascade the cask was taken and from the anode and cathode terminals the ode was taken whether it is right or wrong i still don't know but it is something that uh, for me it was easy to remember and follow now what does what are the benefits of uh, cascode the first benefit of the cascode was it provides a wider bandwidth okay that's the benefits first one is wider bandwidth second uh, you will have increased small signal gain increased small signal gain okay but there is one thing depending upon if this m1 is appearing at the source of m2 then this would get treated as a source degenerated circuit so that is also another thing that you have to understand and remember intuitively we'll come to that then third one is like i said here you have a high input impedance high input impedance and the lastly you can design what is the kind of output you want depending upon what is rd and r not so you have a custom designed output impedance right so these are the benefits that you have uh, what are the places where you could use increased small signal gain and wide bandwidth high input impedance these three are typical characteristics of application would be first thing is current source right current source is one second it can also act as a small signal amplifier here right so you have the amplification here and current amplification also so you'll have a small signal amplification and a current source since you have a high input impedance increased bandwidth you can use this for a wide range of uh, applications 
so hope you understood uh, why cash code comes right now let us look at an example for example how do you use as a cash code stage as a current source because this is going to be very helpful if you are going to have controlled output impedance high input impedance and a large small signal gain then it will be great so what do you do it the way to do that is first you have your bottom transistor what does your bottom transistor have bottom transistor will be input is given here okay so we will call this bias one source is grounded so this is a common source amplifier then you will have a input given here right now this is the output which is fed as the input so this will be vb2 and finally you have your r out looking into that from the top now how do you uh, differentiate between the two way to look at them is as follows first one this is going to be your cas code stage cas code stage which will enhance your bandwidth so this is your common gate input is at the source output is at the drain common gate okay next its feature always in saturation the device has to always be in saturation and this would be the main device for current source right this would be the main device now if this is the main device then this is a resistor coming at the source what will this behave as this will behave as your degeneration source degen degeneration transistor or source degeneration stage source degeneration transistor that would be your common source stage so what will this also be this also has to be in saturation so it is always in saturation right second this has to be your biasing transistor right biasing transistor you will get where do you need to provide a bias and this one will always provide a output resistance of 1 over gds or r02 because it is always a current source right equivalent to like a current source or a load active load so active load having a resistance ro so if your transistor here is m1 and m2 so this will be ro2 this is your source degeneration transistor correct so what will happen here you need a very large current source right for a current source requirement is large output impedance right this is the aim any current source should have a large output impedance now let's see if we can achieve this in this configuration so what we will do we will do the we will draw the small signal equivalent when you draw the small signal equivalent what do you find here since this is your main bias transistor m1 and it is an nmos we will go back to the 
standard one so get drain source what is there is the drain gmvgs right gm1 v1 let me call this as v1 okay so gm1 v1 what do you get there So what do you get here? After this, you will get one thing you will have to carefully note, draw it in gray. This one will give you a GMB, right? So you will have a GMB contribution because source is not grounded. So this is the crucial portion. So you will have Draw it in gray just so that you can always correlate GMB V1. Done. Then comes your output transistor R01. This is your drain, and this is where your V out appears. Clear. Now, coming at the gate, gate, what do you have? DC supply. So it is grounded. Next, you come to the source degeneration circuit, which is given as RO2. Come to the source, connect an RO2 device. So now we have got source degeneration. So with the same, let us find out what is the output impedance. To find an output impedance, give a test circuit test voltage Vx at the output and you will get the current Ix. So what do we do? First thing, we apply KVL here. So what does this give you? This current is given as Ix. What current is here will flow here. So KVL input loop KVL at input loop gives you v1 of x plus ix ro2 is equal to 0 so what will that be v1 plus ix ro2 is equal to 0 otherwise v1 is equal to minus ix ro2 this is one equation Second, we will apply KVL here, right? So KVL in output loop. What does this give you? There are how many voltages? Three voltages. One resistor here, another resistor here, another test voltage. So test voltage, is on one side, these two resistors are on the other side. Now, before that, you have a KVL equation here. So, what is the current flowing through R1? Right, I will call this I R1. So, what is I R1? I R1 is equal to the current flowing through this at this node. So, we will do KCL here. Current flowing through this node is Ix. Then there are two currents going out of it. So you subtract Ix minus Gm1 V1 minus Gm V1 V1. So you have Ix. Now you apply KVL. When you apply KVL, you get Vx is equal to IR01 times R1. So R01 times this value ix minus gm1 v1 minus gm v1 v1 plus ix ro2 now you have to substitute for v1 here then you get ix ro2 terms put together and overall you will find out what is the uh, resistor value so this resistor value will give you 
when you uh, simplify. Right, simplification will give you Vx over Ix is equal to uh, Vx over Ix first term you will have is Ix into RO1. So you will have RO1 and this Ix into RO2. So you will have plus RO2. Okay, then you have V1. V1 is minus Ix into RO2. So minus, minus, and this minus will get cancelled. So it will be GM1 plus GMB1 times RO2 is the other factor. So I will split them saying GM1 RO2 plus GMB1 RO2. Okay. So this is going to be your R out. So, if you see, you have a very large output impedance. Clear? So, CAS code is one way of using this. Now, what do you gain from all of these? We have to do a simplification, right? Let's see what all observations we get. observations from this equation. So first of all, to get observation, we'll have to rewrite. What we will rewrite R out as, pick out the most common elements across everywhere. What is that? You have R O 2, R O 2, R O 2, three places you have got R O 2. So what you can do? You can just isolate them. Correct? How do you do that? So if I was given an option, I will club R01. Did I miss something here? Oh, yes, I did. I missed this R01 factor for these devices. What, is, what was R01? See, this R02 into Ix, P1 contribution is here. The R01 I missed out here. So now you have uh, one term with R01, another term with R02, and one, two terms with R01, R02. So now you can choose whether you want to keep R01 separately or R02 separately. Uh, what is the inference? How do you know what is the inference that you can gain? The best way to do that is, this is your input transistor. So let us club. RO1 together so that we can bring in RO2 factor along with the GM factors here. So let us rewrite. We will rewrite this as RO1 plus RO2 times 1 plus GM1 R1 plus GMB1 R1. So I'm just rearranging these factors a little. So, so R02 is taken all together. Now, in this particular case, what is the other information that you can gather? If R01 times GM1 plus GMB1, that is this factor. We will take this, if this is very large compared to this one, then you can omit one. So that is the aim. So we will do this. If RO1 times this bracket factor, GM1 plus GMB1 is very large compared to one. Then what happens? This one will go away and R out is left over as R1 plus R2 times R1 times GM1 plus GMB1. 
clear so that will give you ro1 plus ro2 times ro1 times gm p1 plus gm1 now in this case again this is a factor now if this product is very large compared to just ro1 so if gm1 plus gmb1 times ro1 times ro2 is very large compared to simply ro1 then the total ro impedance can be approximately written as the gm of the input right that combination gm gm1 plus gmb1 times the r out of this device r o1 multiplied by the r out of the cascode device r o2 so this would be the large extremely large output okay so you bring down to this stage from this value only to the gain intention you make life very sim simple in that case what is that so this is in some cases if gmb1 gmb1 is very small so it is effectively becomes you can further simplify that is if the contribution is very small gm1 ro1 ro2 so that would be gm1 ro1 multiplied by ro2 so whatever you put in cascode gets multiplied in the gain here so approximately this is how you gain intuition saying if you have a cascode you get a value gain value or an output impedance gm1 times ro1 times ro2 and that would be the output impedance also also the gain also that because your gm1 is very close by to that value in this case m1 is in saturation very high output impedance so this would be your most appropriate current source correct right? very good candidate for current source because it has got a very very large gain and having a very large gain means it will not get impacted by what is the amount of current load being drawn here that is one way of saying another way of saying is that you will see these terminologies being used more frequently here m2 boosts the output resistance of m1 by a factor or you can say m1 boosts the output impedance of m2 by gm1 r out okay so this is the ro2 this cascode device boosts the output impedance of this transistor by gm time gm r out times so you can boost the resistance using a cascode device so this is very good application that you can use so this is cascode stage as a current source next we will see cascode stage as an amplifier cascode stage as an amplifier what is this stage here again you will have same similar type but i will just draw the circuit in a different manner just to uh, differentiate and uh, recall this in a much later lecture also so that way of doing that is first is as an amplifier i need an input device so here is my input and uh, this is the output and this is my output stage so this is my common source amplifier next if i have to give the input here and take the output on top i will give to the source give the source here and take the output here and at the output instead of giving plain i will give it rd value so now this is going to be your input and output stage 
again let us quickly differentiate this circuit is now your common source amplifier and this circuit is a common gate stitch now this would be your mains device here this is your main device as you are giving the input to this stage here and this would be your cascode stage as you are taking the output here so where is the output taken at the drain v out right so intuitively let us find out what is this value so this has got a gm1 this has got a zone gm2 and this is r out so what is the effective gain of the circuit av is approximately gm1 r1 now since this is a common drain circuit what is the input or gain that you are looking what is the current flowing here id what is id id is gm v in so your id is equal to gm1 v in now oh, this is the current that is flowing here what are the uh, conditions now how do you bias this circuit how do you find out what to do the easiest way is a lot a a lot this node has vx and let us find out what are how this vx plays a role here why vx vx is the input of the common gate stage and it is the output of the common source stage right clear no the condition is both of them have to be in saturation you want saturation so m1 and m2 now what is my m1 m1 is always going to be the main device this is m2 now let us look at what are the biasing conditions for both of these to be in saturation we will find out the bias conditions this bias condition was not needed in a current source because you only wanted a current source flowing you did not want any amplification in the signal whereas bias condition is needed because you need to place these devices into saturation such that you get appropriate swings and you don't see saturation or distortion or non linearity right now let us begin the analysis first one for uh, m1 to be in saturation what is the condition you need to follow vds is vgs minus vt so vx has to be greater than v in minus vt okay i will call this vt1 so what does this mean what is vx value vx is vx this value is vb minus vgs so vb minus vgs2 okay now vx is equal to vb minus vgs2 is greater than v in minus vt1 right or find what is the bias transistor so your vb has to be greater than v in minus or v in plus vgs2 minus vt1 so v in minus vt in is your vgs minus vt and you have another vt so this is your vb value for m2 to be in saturation what is this value v out minus vx correct this is vds value v out minus vx so this is vds circuit that should be greater than vgs2 minus vt2 
pgs2 minus pt2 so how do you simplify this try to get v out on this side so what will be left over v out should be greater than vx plus vgs2 minus vt1 vt2 now what is vx what is this vx value vx is greater than v in minus vt1 okay so we will substitute v out to be greater than v in 1 sorry v in minus vt1 plus vgs2 minus vt2 now you look at this combination here v in is basically vgs1 minus vt1 and this is vgs2 minus vt2 so what is this delta difference we found out we gave this a name as overdrive voltage right so v overdrive of 1 v overdrive of 2 right so the minimum output voltage v out min minimum output voltage for those is vov1 plus vov2 and this is the overdrive voltages of both the devices so that would be the bare minimum output swing that you will get on the lower side so v out min is going to be overdrive voltage of this device plus the overdrive voltage of this device will be seen at the output so what does this happen the maximum swing of this device of this output gets reduced by the overdrive voltage too so this is the additional loss that you will see by using a cas code device so your v out min without cas code will be only v over v o v1 with cas code it be v o v1 plus v o v2 so that will be your bias condition for the cas code now what is the bias condition your bias condition is vb how much is vb vb is vgs right and vds correct or this is vgs and vds so whatever this vx value is your vds value here so that is the vb value that needs to be present got it now what is v vds value vgs minus vt is the smallest value so v in minus vt1 so it is vgs2 plus v in minus vt1 this is your v overdrive 1 so the minimum bias value should be the vgs value plus the overdrive value or the vds value that is present so that will be the minimum bias voltage to ensure that both the devices are in saturation now uh, what does happen here this is a common source stage right this common source stage will act like a degeneration stage for the common gate stage so this is only r out so how does that look we will now use the analysis so you have your vb stage with its own ro2 this is m2 m2 and ro2 then you have the ro1 of this device ro1 then what is the impact of this i in there must be a current flowing right so gm1 v in 1 is your current i what is this i here this id is given as 
gm1 vgs1 vgs1 is vn correct now since it is an amplifier and you have a gain when you multiply by ro2 you get a voltage source so this is a thevenin equivalent what do you get here minus gm1 v in ro1 so that would be the voltage source here that you get here gm1 v in times r1 so this is the thevenin equivalent so you have a source regeneration of your bias transistor on top along with your input being given there so that will be the total contribution of this m1 device now this contribution is equivalent for this one what you are doing effectively you are drawing the total contribution of this device in this place clear yes or no with this how do you understand and draw what is pending here pending is you got this contribution cg here left over is your rd rd and vtd right now let me draw the small signal model of this cascoded amplifier for that let me copy this content small signal equivalent of cascode amplifier we will remove this arrow and now if you would draw the small signal equivalent it will look as follows first thing will be which device you have to draw the m2 device what is m2 gate drain source at the gate you have p bias p bias is dc source so ground gm vgs will be v2 then here gm2 v2 then then you will have the common bias so you will have source bar voltage right so gm v2 v2 finally you have your output coming here r2 here is your v out this is your v out circuit right here you will tap the v out at this v out you have an parallel load rd what is pending here gate done drain done source what do you have at the source source you have ro1 plus your in supply voltage what is this minus gm1 v in r1 so this is your voltage source here plus minus very important to have this so this is your small signal equivalent of this cascoded amplifier now what do you think so you need to find you will find the gain what is the small signal gain of the circuit first one simplest we will apply kvl here so kvl at input loop what is that zero is equal to v2 plus the current through this source device plus the current here so what will be the current that is flowing here 
first thing is um, p2 minus where is v out v out by rd that is going to be the total current let me simplify this so il is equal to v out by rd id is equal to minus im correct now this id is the current that is flowing here so this is id times r1 now what is the current flowing through i r1 i r02 so you will have to apply kcl right kcl at output node first thing you will get is id is equal to minus il that is for this branch and this branch this is clear il is going to minus p out by rd clear then comes what is your other circuit the current through the ro2 i ro2 is equal to id minus these two currents gm2 v2 minus gm b2 v2 or it is you can write it as i r o 2 is equal to i d minus v2 g m 2 plus g m b 2 this is the i r o 2 resistance here right what is the let's come back to this kvl so once we the reason why we did we wanted to find out what i d was so it is v2 minus right or let me just do this voltage plus this voltage plus this voltage is equal to zero so it is v2 plus ro1 id this voltage minus gm1 v1 ro1 is equal to zero now if you uh, substitute id what is id minus v out by rd clear so that would be v2 is equal to minus ro1 v out over rd minus gm1 v in r0 R1 equal to 0. Now you just take out V2. Find the final answer V2 is equal to R1 V out by RD plus GM1 V in R1. Found out what is the value of V2. Now you need to do KVL in the output loop. To get a relationship between V out and V2. So, what is the KVL here? This KVL is given as this voltage, this voltage, this voltage is equal to the voltage seen at the output loop. So, what is the voltage here? V out. V out is equal to some of these three voltages. So, that would be starting from here minus gm1 v in ro1 plus ro1 id plus ro2 i ro2 now you need to substitute all these values here minus gm v in ro1 plus ro1 times id id is minus v out by rd so i will change this plus sign to a minus sign minus v out by rd plus ro2 what is iro2 iro2 is 
I D minus V two times G M two plus G M V two. Now we will substitute I D. I D is minus V out over R D. And what is V two? V two is minus this entire factor. G M two plus G M V two. Times R one is common, so we'll try and bring out R one. R one multiplied by V out by R D plus V in G M. V in G M. Note if you look at the units within this bracket, they have a unit of current, G M V G S. V by I, V by R. So both are current. Current multiplied by resistance is voltage. That multiplied by here effectively gives you a voltage gain only. Correct. So this is your voltage. Uh, no, once you multiply it by your R not into I is V. V into G M is I. I factor. This is also I. All multiplied by R will give you voltage. So this is the Correct units that you have. I repeat. This has a unit of current V out by R D. G M V G S is again unit of current. Current multiplied by resistance is voltage. This voltage multiplied by transconductance will give you current. V out by R E D is current. This entire bracket is now current. Multiplied by R out will give you voltage. So this is the total. Now let us complete. This equation minus R one V out by R D minus G M one V in R one is finally voltage. So this way you will ensure that you have not missed out anything. So how do you uh, simplify? You have to do a lot of simplification here, right? Club all the V in terms. So what are the V in terms here? This is one V in term. No V out, no V out, no V out. There's only one V in here. So look at the V in terms in essence. V in G M times R one times G M two plus G M B two times R O two plus G M one V in R one. So this is going to be the complete V in term, right? So V in is going to be minus G M one R one. Just uh, it is a minus sign. Minus this entire factor into this minus is minus. So it still stays minus. Start with R O two multiplied by R O one. Multiplied by G M two plus G M B two. Multiplied by G M V in. So it is one. Multiplied by G M one. This is your complete V in factor. Now find out what is your V out factor. V out factor is going to be this is one minus or plus. You will see R out by R D. So minus will become both that side. R O one by R D. Then there is one more V out term here. This is minus, so it will be minus. All uh, is a minus R O by R D will become plus R O two by R D. Then you have this term again with a minus, so it becomes plus on this side. That becomes R O one by R D. R O one by R D, and you have R O two here. R O one times R O two by R D, all multiplied by this G M B factor. G M two plus G M B two. 
Now, if you simplify these, now further, if you just uh, rewrite, you have V out by V in is equal to minus of RO GM1, RO1 if you take out, 1 plus this factor. The reason I am spending more time here is there is a lot of learning that you will get here. And then we will have to further simplify the circuit below. So, how do you like to simplify? You will simplify here. So, this is Vn. Gm1, Ro1, Gm1, Ro1. So, take out minus Gm1, Ro1 in bracket. What is left over? Minus Gm1, 1 plus Ro2 then the Gm factor. Right. Gm2 plus Gmv2. Now, what is this factor? If you recollect, this is the source degeneration factor, right? 1 plus Gm2 RO2. So, this will be that factor that you play with here. Here in the output, you have V out. If you look at it, too many RDs in the denominator, only one term without an RD. So, take RD common factor. You have RD plus R1 plus R2 plus a product of these two. R1 plus R2, R1 times R2 multiplied by Gm2 plus Gmv2. Entire. Now, if you further reduce, you will get this factor here. The voltage gain is given as V out by V in. Look at the importance factor here. This RD which is present here gets multiplied by G, the RD factor here. Right? And that would become minus GM1 RO1 RD. Whole multiplied by 1 plus GM RD. GM2 plus GMB2 times RO2 whole divided by this entire factor coming down here. So, that would be Rd plus Ro1 plus Ro2 plus Ro1 Ro2 times Gm2 plus Gmv2. This is going to be the total gain. Right? Now, here are few things that you will have to observe. What do you have to observe is, look at the way they are paired. GM2, GMB2 will always come along with the RO2. Wow. Right? This is one factor. It is also C that also in the denominator. Correct? Now, if you take out RO1 here, right? If you take out RO1, or uh, yeah, you will still get this entire term RO1 times 1 plus this factor. Did you get that? This term, this term, if you take so, let me use a different color. RO1 1 plus GM2 plus GMB2 times. RO2. Now, did you see this RO1 appearing here and the RO1 appearing here also? This RO1, this RO1. So, effectively, this entire colored term is similar looking for you. What is left over? Left over is in the numerator GMRD. Denominator Rd plus Ro2. If you take out these two, Rd plus Ro2 is on the output side. All this is a common factor there. So, you will see how you can approximate. The way you approximate is find out what is the gain. So, let us rewrite this as minus Gm1 Rd times 
आर ओ वन प्लस वन प्लस आर ओ टू जी एम बी टू प्लस जी एम टू होल डिवाइडेड बाय आर ओ टू प्लस आर डी प्लस आर ओ वन टाइम्स वन प्लस आर ओ टू जी एम टू प्लस जी एम बी टू Now, if I call this entire factor, right, as some factor uh, J, stand for Javed, right? So you can write this as minus G M one R D times J divided by R O two plus R D plus J. Now, having these two, now what do you intuitively get here? Right, the intuition that you get here is if if J is very large compared to R O one times R O D. What do you get? If J is very large compared to R O two plus R D, then what do you get? Your gain voltage will be approximately minus G M one R D J. Divided by J, so when J J will cancel, effectively your gain will be J M one R D. So this is one nice way of telling what is the small signal gain will be effective. But you have certain limitations. So what will that limitation be? So otherwise, the way to do that now, what is J here? J is one. Uh, this J factor. Let me do it here itself. In this J factor, if R O two times G M B two times G M one is very large compared to this one, then effectively J will be equal to R O one, R O two times G M B plus G M two. So, where did you observe this similar thing? R O one and R O two. You observe this in the cascode form. So, what was the cascode form? If you have the output impedance, right? Effective output impedance of your cascode circuit, which is given. Plus so this is your R O one. This is your M two. M two has a factor G M two R O two. So what will be the R O seen here? Output impedance. The output impedance is given as. R out is approximately the product of G M of the top device M two multiplied by the output resistance of the top device R O two multiplied by the resistance at the source device R O one. So this is your effective R. In this case, this is approximation. Otherwise, you can write this as G M two. Plus G M B two times R O two times R O one. So where did you notice a similar value? You noted the similar value even when you were doing a current source. What did you get? G M one top device R O one 
into R O to B. So in both cases, the output impedance is increased. So for a large gain, for a large gain in amplifier, a cascode device boosts the gain by boosting the output impedance. Right? Now, what is this is the total output impedance that you see, right? But for this amplifier that was designed here, what is the amplifier looking like? This is V in, this is VB output RD. So this is your input device, right? So this has got a factor GM1 R01. This is GM2 GMV2 RO2. So what is the effective gain? The AV, gain AV will be given as GM of the input device times R out of the complete circuit. That is given as this GM1. R out is given as the product of all these two. GM2 plus GMB2 multiplied by R02, then multiplied by R01. So this will be the effective enhanced gain that you get from this. So your cascode device will increase both your gain by increasing your output impedance. Now, with this done, you can now replace the resistor here. What do you do? You can replace the resistance with a current source. What does this look like? So this resistance, you can swap it with a current source. Right? Now that current source I1 will also introduce its own gain also. Right? So when this output impedance looking into this is infinity. So when it's looking into infinity, what does your gain become then? Your effective gain will be the same. So what does this mean? Having a current source changes the gain equation to approximate gain equation to GM1 times R01 times uh, GMB2 plus GM2 uh, times RO2. So that gives your effective gain and it presents a since the uh, current uh, resistance looking into the current source is infinity, your effective R0 is still maintained with the same RD. Only thing is your device size will reduce drastically. Hmm? So it is definitely a big plus because what does it do? Changing this resistor into a current source has got two benefits. Here, the impedance is infinity R, but this infinity is only R. Another thing is this area is reduced and your R will go up almost to infinity. So this is definitely a, a big plus for your design, right? 
and this circuit also effectively has the same R out. The R out is given as GMB two plus GM two times R O two times R one. So the R out does not change by transposing the resistance with a current source. So you will have a maximum signal swing also in this case. Clear? So this is a big design plus. This design plus takes us to an interesting case of dimensions. Right? So you have dimensions here, right? So you have one transistor here, another transistor here, another. So you'll have three transistors. Each transistor will have their own W by L. Now, adding this W by L, you will get to know how do you play with. Right? Now, let us look at some of the practical examples. Practical design considerations. Okay. Now, question is if W remains the same and L doubles, what will happen? W by 2L effectively will make mu and C ox W by L as K by 2. This K by 2 will make your GM also reduced by 2 becomes GM by 2. Right? Now, what does that do? GM by 2 will reduce your ID by 2. If you look at it, the current flowing through the same device, if you reduce the L, will reduce. Now, what do you play with that? How, what is the benefit of doing all of these? We will take the example of gain calculation. So, gain AV is given as approximately GM R out. So, what is for common source stage? So, what is GM R out given as? 2 mu and CX W by L, right? So, 2 K mu and CX W by L times ID square root of 2 k d multiplied by what is your r out r out is 1 over lambda id what does this reduce to how do we gather some information from here the first way we have to gather is find out what is your id in the id Find out what is your overdrive. Overdrive square that you have term, that is your VGS minus VT whole square term that is here. What can you gain from that? That will be given as 2ID, 2ID by NCOX W by L. With this, you will gain. GM information also. So you have got overdrive voltage, GM voltage. This is given by a GM voltage. This is D voltage. What will be the new current flowing here? New current in sense, if you have a device which is like this. This is W by L. This is ID. This is V in. We have another device whose L is reduced by four times. This is the ID. This is VN. And you have another device, Casco device, right? 
W by L. Same cache code device, same current ID. So here will be your P in, this is PP2. What would be the gain in these circuits? The gain in the circuit is given by AV is equal to the GMR out, right? GMR out is given as 2 times K ID, root ID will go away bottom. So, you will have 2K by ID, right? Whole divided by 1 over lambda, right? Lambda ID, root ID will get cancelled. Now do that here. Your W by L, so this will become K by 4. So effectively this is 2 times K, K becomes K by 4 because W L by 4 times ID. Now this whole thing in the bracket will be 1 over lambda. What is the gain factor here? 2 will take away 2. So this entire AV is A divided by, what is it? A by 2, right? This AV by 2. Or this can be equivalently said that this will effectively become GM by 2. Decreasing L by 4 times will reduce GM by 2 times. Now, same thing if you do in the cascode time, AV, your gain AV times AV, you will get an AV square here actually. Now, this AV square, you will ensure that your GM2 will be the same as GM. So, you look at this gain. Here, by reducing the L by 4 times, your GM reduces by 2, gain reduces by 2. But if you stack the device, your GM retains the same, but your gain uh, goes by square. So, this is a practical design condition intuitively that you will commonly use. So, instead of placing, uh, reducing the uh, L value, you can increase the cash code value. So, now this cash code has an advantage that it is great for noise application. So, wherever there is going to be a noise, if you have a cascode device there, the noise will propagate less to your next devices. Okay. Another way of saying that is, if you quadruple the length, keeping this results in doubling of the overdrive voltage, VOV, because it is coming in the denominator your V overdrive will get doubled. So, you can use one half of the overdrive voltage to achieve the same current. So, for identical devices, CAS code also exhibits doubling of overdrive voltage. And this property is commonly used as a shielding property of CAS code. This will be the last topic for today, where we will talk about shielding property. So, the cast code will shield. What does it shield? It shields a particular node. Now, where can this be used? If there is any circuit whose output So this is your input and this is your output and this output varies drastically, right? And because of this variation, this voltage can vary and causing an input noise in your circuit here. Then what you can do is you can use a cascode device with a very large gain. What is this AV? This AV is GM2 RO2 have a very large gain such that the 
big variation will not be seen on the small circuit or a very small variation gives a very large output variation here so this is a reverse circuit so what it is doing you are shielding this node right it is the output of this input node you are shielding this node from any output variation here right so it does not imply here well so this is the shielding property of a cascode so whether you use a cascode amplifier first it is cascode current source or you use a cascode amplifier you will shield the output node of the input device successfully so this will be shielding this node so you will start shielding this node here so if you really need to shield that this property can be effectively used if you have two different for example if you are using this in a current bias or a current source or a current mirror application if you have right you have a pb coming from a current diode circuit so if you have a current mirror and you have two devices present here m1 and m2 their source is connected to the ground now if you have a different current id1 flowing and a different current id2 flowing then you can have an any analog system that is present here can be shielded okay. any analog system can be shielded how let us do an example of this one itself let us use this you are using two nmos devices to generate constant current sources but you have a unique condition that the supply voltage the node voltage here vx and the node voltage vy are having a small delta now what is a delta vx is equal to vy plus delta v there is a small delta that is coming now what will be the resultant difference in the current and assuming you have channel length modulation so lambda is clm is present lambda is not equal to 0 so what is the resulting difference between id find the resulting difference due to this vx and vy in id1 and id2 so in this system how do you build it now let us see the easiest way of doing that what is the current equation id1 id1 is equal to mu n c ox half mu n c ox w by l 1 times vgs minus vt what is it vb minus vt 1 whole square so in channel length modulation is that you multiply it by 1 plus lambda vds what is vds dx okay next id2 same thing half un c ox W by L two times of W will be a two, V B minus V T two, whole square times one plus lambda V Y. Right. Now we need to find the difference between the two. We know that V X has a larger V Y delta. Now, in this condition, one assumption: let V T one 
equal to vt2 equal to vt okay in that case additionally let w by l 1 is equal to w by l 2 equal to w by l let us assume that the vt and w by l are constant so what does this equation become id1 minus id2 if you subtract these two this entire term minus this entire term so what does happens this term is constant vb2 minus vb1 is a constant term so this entire factor becomes constant here so that would be half mu n c ox w over l vb minus vt this is taken then you have to take the difference 1 plus lambda vx minus 1 minus lambda vy so what does this get you get lambda times vx minus vy and vx minus vy is given as delta v so the delta id that you get is given as half mu n c ox w by l v b minus v t the whole square lambda delta v what is this term this is term you can call it as i naught right so delta i d is equal to main current i naught times lambda times delta v so this is going to be your change in the delta i that you will see so remember what do you do with that you have so much change now you do not want this change ideally you want your id1 to be equal to id2 so what do you do you add the following same vb transistor you take okay you add the bias here exactly same transistor you will take and in the you will add a cas code here cas code device same thing will be biased with another voltage vb1 or we will call it as vb2 and now you take your whole same analog system system here now when you correct when you want the same id to flow this is m1 m2 m3 m4 id1 sorry id2 this is id1 what will be the values become here this is your vx this is your voltage vy so when you add these casco devices what would they become this casco device look at this you will have to play with the gain how does this gain come into the picture for you delta id is equal to id1 minus id2 what is the current flowing here same as half mu n c ox same w by l transistors everywhere multiplied by v b minus v t whole square times lambda sorry lambda times what is the value here you will see a new voltage reference here this is p this is q so that would be delta v p q now the exercise is what is delta v p q delta v p q is given as gain in this resistances is cascode device what is the gain of this cascode device gm times delta v times gm into gmb what will that be sorry 
So this will be the cash code divide, right? So this will be TM3 RO3. It will be the add and additional gain you will get here of RO1. So this will be total output impedance seen here. And the total output impedance seen here is RO0. So what is the additional gain that you get? Multiplied by that factor, you will get here. That delta VPQ is VP minus VQ. So what will be VP? Typically, you will be VP divided by this factor. What is this factor? GM3 plus GMB3 times RO3. Okay. And same factor here will be VQ by GM4 plus GMB4 times RO4. Now, since they are in cash code, assuming the same, then you can equate GM3 and GM4 to be the same. So you can equivalently say delta VPQ is reduced by GM3 plus GMB3 times RO3. So this is a reduced factor. So this reduced factor is the delta V that you get on top. So now if you apply that delta V now, uh, what is delta V? This uh, delta VPQ delta VPQ will be given as the delta V divided by GM3 plus GMB3 times R3. Effectively, this delta. This is the delta V. Now, how much has the delta V got impacted into the final current equation. So when you put the final current equation back, the delta ID is equal to ID1 minus ID2 equal to half mu n c ox w over l vb minus vt the whole square times delta vq is delta V over GM3 plus GMB3 times RO3. Now what is happening with cash code? Sorry, without cash code, the factor in the bracket was only delta V. But with cash code, that factor had a very large denominator. Right, had a very large denominator. This is, for example, saying if you add a numerical value, if you say delta V was 1 and the same delta V became 1, but the denominator here became 1000. Example, then you can see with the cash code, the variation in the current became 1000 or reduced by the gain of this factor. So this shielded, the cash code shielded the current by reducing the variation to just 1000. Instead of having one unit, only 1000th of the unit is used. And this is called the shielding property. Without cash code, with cash code. So this directly shows you the shielding property of cash code. So using this, you can definitely reduce the total amount of current variation. The current variation is reduced at the output because at this cash code level, the voltage variation has been reduced. 
due to a very large gain factor. The voltage variation reduced by the current variation reduced. So I can translate this to be I itself. So such a small value is what you will get. So this is one. If I same logic, if I apply say three cascodes, two cascode devices, what will happen? VB3, VB2, VN. Then the output impedance at this node will be R out. And this is M1, M2, M3. The output impedance at this node is going to be approximately GM2, RO2 times RO1. And then the output impedance at this node will be GM3, RO3 times GM2, RO2 times RO1. As you can see, the R out increases drastically as you cascode, but your voltage swing will fall drastically. So, what is the minimum V out here? V out min. V out pin will become V over drive 1 of this device plus V over drive 2 of this device plus V over drive 3 of this device. So your V min or your voltage swing will reduce by 1 voltage. So this is called a triple cascode. right? This you will rarely use, but if you really want to use this circuit, you should not have a swing requirement. Right. Uh, if there are any questions, please let me know. If not, we will close the class here today. Let us quickly summarize. So what did we learn in today's class? First, we learned First of all, what is the difference between a cascade versus cascode? Okay. Second, we see that cascode increases your resistance. Your R out increases because R out increases, your gain increases. Third, we saw the shielding property of cascode right before along with that we saw the gain boosting property right gain boosting property and we also found that if you want variation reduction that is again your shielding property variation reduction between stages what you will get. So these are the four points we covered in today's class. And this cascode is going to be either your best friend or your worst enemy in analog IC design. Right? So it is either best friend on one side or worst enemy on the other side. Why is it your best friend? It is best friend for gain, R out, shielding. But it is going to be your worst enemy for voltage swing. So choose carefully what you want. How many cascode stages, how many stacking that you do, that much you will take care.
right thank you class now uh, let me stop the recording